to just bless the name of the Lord. We honor God, we give God the glory, we give him the honor, and we give God the praise. Because he's a good God all by himself. Sit up high and he look down low. But right now I cover my environment, I cover myself. <clears throat> I cover my children with the blood of Jesus. Barricade my life with the fire of the Holy Ghost. I plead the blood, the undiluted blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the pure blood, undiluted blood of Jesus. I just pass it. I plead the blood, the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Son of the living God. We just give God the glory and I give him the honor. I want to talk about Samson today, Samson and Delilah. Glory to God. We just bless his name. Shabbaya God. Shabbaya Lord God. The blood of Jesus. I plead the blood. The blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The son of the living God. Just magnify his name and give him glory. Give him honor and I give him praise. Hallelujah. Just bless his name. We bless his name. We bless the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We bless the name of Jesus. I want to talk about Samson and Delilah today. Hallelujah. Just bless his name. I give honor and glory to God. Magnify his name with me. I exalt him on high because he's a good God. He's worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. He's God today, yesterday, and forevermore. I will just bless his name. We glorify his name and we honor him. I give him glory. I give him honor and I give him praise. He's a God that will never forsake, forsake us. He's a God that never sees righteous forsaken or is seed begging bread. So we just magnify his name and bless his holy name because he is good all by himself. All by himself. We just bless the name of the Lord. You know, I have, I have to come on. I come on Facebook when the lord inspire me when he remind me to look back at my life that's when i come on when he we when he want me to look back on my life when he want me to look back of where i'm coming from when he want me to look back of where he has brought me from when he, he want me to look back as where he has hold me in the hollow palm of his hand when there was danger beset, beset me and he, he he rescued me out of the miry clay when he rescued me out of the pit when i almost go in down into the abyss and he rescued me and he guard me and he guide me and he instruct me i just bless his name and magnify him and um you know i want to share some some truth with you god bless you woman of god god bless you i want to just keep it real with you i can't i can't come on and i can't script everything i pray that it will even help one person but i pray that it will help many and um you want me to talk today about samson and delilah because um I'm, i have to testify today and i have to testify about his goodness about his mercy about his grace and um he, ta he taught me samson i want you to talk about samson and delilah and i said okay god if you want me to do samson and delilah i will i will do samson and delilah so i just bless the name of god and i give glory unto the lord and i give him honor and I give him praise.
because he's a good God. He's a good God and he's worthy to be praised. From the, thank you. Uh, thank you. I've, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. I want you I want you to know that if I don't if I don't acknowledge you right now, I will in the name of Jesus. But this is heavy. This is heavy. Hallelujah. So I just magnify the name of the Lord. I give God the glory. I give him the praise. And I give him the honor. And uh, I want to speak of his goodness. Of his goodness and his mercy. I want you to know that sometimes when you think God is not with you. He is with you because he loves us. And even when we make the, those deadly mistakes. Even when we go down in the, in the black hole. Even when we go in the pit. And once we say, Jesus, once we call on the name, Yeshua Amashia, once we say that in the name of Jesus, everything change. The old dimension change when you call on the name of Jesus. So I am here today um, to talk about his goodness. I'm here to talk about his mercy. I'm here to talk about his goodness towards me. I'm here and I pray that my testimony will help somebody today in the mighty name of Jesus. Because what, what happened to Samson? Samson was empowered by the Spirit, but he, he was domin dominated by his flesh. And I'm here to talk to you today to let you know that let the holy spirit lead you let the holy spirit guide you because sometime we'll have our flesh rise up because wolf come in sheep clothing and when they put that those suits on when they dress so nice a man or a woman can be delilah it's not just a woman is a delilah a man can be a delilah so i am here today to 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 talk to you and then i'm going to testify so i want to i want if you are, if you're home and you have your bible i want you to go to to um judges chapter 13. i'm going to be on here for a while i think i'm going to be on here for a while because this is huge this download is huge hallelujah this download load is huge god bless you God bless you. This download is very huge. And what happened to Samson? Samson was led by the Spirit of God. But he, God empowered Samson with the Spirit. God empowered Samson with the wisdom. God empowered Samson. God spoke to Samson's mother before conception and, and decree and declare who he wants Samson to be and what Samson should do. But sometimes our flesh beset us. Our flesh get in the way. And what our flesh does, it, te it tell us stuff. And when a wolf come in sheep clothing and you think that you're, when it's peace and safety, it is sudden destruction. Sudden destruction will come. So I'm going to read some of um, Judges. I'm going to read a part of Judges chapter 13. Then I'm going to read Judges chapter 14. Then I'm going to go to Judges chapter chap, chapter chapter 16. I'm going to skip 15. And I have a personal reason why I'm skipping 15. But you at your time can read Judges 15. Hallelujah. So right now I cover the atmosphere. It's a bit cold. I cover the atmosphere with the blood of Jesus. I'm outside. And with the fire of the Holy Ghost, I speak the blood and I plead the blood of Jesus, the undiluted blood of Jesus, that he will surround, he will purge us, he will give us a blood transfusion right now in the name of Jesus. I barricade this atmosphere with the wall of fire in the mighty name of Jesus. So God will get the glory, he will get the honor. And he will get the praise in the mighty name of Jesus. And like I said to you before, this platform is organic. 
this platform, uh, the only place maybe I will allow to speak like this is in my father's church. I don't think any preacher want to hear what I'm, I'm about to say. But I'm going to say it whether you hear or forbear in the mighty name of Jesus. So right now, Father, we're just going to cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus. We're going to cover ourselves with the fire of the Holy Ghost. We're going to cover ourselves with the undiluted blood of Jesus. We're going to cover ourselves with the fire of the Holy Ghost in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And I think you know what I'm about to say. So we just bless the name of the Lord. We just bless the name of the Lord and we give him glory and we give him honor and we give him praise. I'm going to read Judges 13 and then I'm going to share a preview of my testimony and then I'm going to go on to um, 14 and then we're going to talk and I'm going to share a preview of that and then I will give you the meat. Hallelujah. So we just thank God and bless his holy name. <clears throat> Um, the birth of Samson. I'm going to read about the birth of Samson. And um, my reading might be different from yours. Because I'm using, right now I'm using the NIV. Hallelujah. But if you don't have the NIV and you want me to use the King James or the Scofield or the Rainbow Bible or the Amplified Bible or the Message Bible, I will do that. But it's, it's a little bit cold. So right now I just cover again with the blood and the fire of the Holy Ghost. Okay, hallelujah. And, and again, the Israel, Israelite did evil in the eyes of the Lord. So the Lord delivered them into the hands of the Philistine for 40 years. A certain man of Zorah named Mahoni from the clan of the Danites had a wife. Who was, was, who was sterile, who was sterile, and he, rem, rem, he and remained childless. The angel of the Lord appeared to her and said, said, You are sterile and childless, but you are going to conceive and have a son. Now see to it that you drink no, no wine or any fermented drink. That you drink, you drink no wine or any fermented drink. I'm going to just pause right here for a second and let you know that I am a wine connoisseur. A wine connoisseur is someone that collect wine. A wine connoisseur is someone that have hundreds of bottles of wine, and um, a wine connoisseur. Um, have the wine and if people come into their presence and they want to drink without getting drunk They can have a drink. You don't have to believe me, but the Lord know I I don't drink wine I don't have anything against drinking wine because any kind of wine you can think of I do have the wine I have every kind of wine from all over the world But I don't drink wine and I don't I don't take vinegar and I do not eat grapes and I, I eat nothing of the vine so let me just continue and read right here and he said that you do not eat anything unclean because you will conceive and give birth to a son no razor may go use on his head because the because the boy is to be a Nazarite set apart to God from birth and he will begin the deliverance of Israel from the hands of the Philistine. Then the woman went to her husband and told him, a man of God came, came to me. He looked like an angel of God. Very, very awesome. I did not ask him where he came from and he did not tell me his name, but he said to me, you will conceive and give birth to a son. Now then drink no wine or other fermented drink or do not do not eat anything unclean because this boy will be a Nazarite of God from birth until the day of his death then Mahoni prayed to the Lord O Lord I beg you let the man of God you sent to, to, to us come again to teach us how to bring up the boy 
who is to be born. God heard Mahoni. God heard Mahoni, and the angel, the angel of God, came again to the to the woman while she was out in the field. But her hus but her husband Mahoni was not with her. The woman hur hurried to tell her husband, "He is here. He is here." he is here the man who appeared to me the other day he is here man mahoni got up and followed his wife when he came to the man he said are you the one who talked to my wife i i am he said mahoni asked him when your reward are fulfilled what is to be to be the rule for the boy life and work the angel of the lord answer answer answered your wife must do all that i have told her she must not eat anything that that comes from the grapevine nor drink any any wine or any fermented drink nor eat anything unclean she must do everything i have commanded her Mahoni said to the angel of the Lord, "We would like would like you to to stay until we prepare a young goat for you." The angel of the Lord replied, "Even though you you detain me, I will not I will not eat any of your food. Even though you detain me, I will not eat any of your food. But if you prepare a burnt offering." and offer it to the Lord, man Mahoni not realized that it was the angel of the Lord. Then Mahoni inquired to the angel of the Lord, what is your name, so that we may honor you when your word come true? He replied, why do you ask my name? It is beyond understanding. Then Mahoni took a young goat together with the grain offering and sacrificed it on a rock to the Lord. And the Lord did an amazing thing. While Mahoni and his wife watch as the flame blazed up from the altar towards heaven, the angel of the Lord ascended in the flame. Seeing this, Mahoni and his wife fell to their face to the ground when the angel of the Lord did not show himself again to Manoni and his wife, Mahoni realized that this was the angel of the Lord. He said, he said, we are doomed to die, he said to his wife. We have seen God. They did not see God. But he said, we have doomed to die. God bless you. We have doomed to die. But his wife answered, if the Lord had meant to kill us he would have accept he, he would not have accept the burnt offering and grain offering from our hands no nor shown us all these things or told us how to do this the woman gave birth to a boy and named him samson he grew and the Lord blessed him and the spirit of the Lord began to stir him while he was in uh, in Mahenai Dan Mahenai Dan between Zora and Isha um, I'm going to read now about his marriage um, the Lord can the Lord have Mahoni wife conceive a son and when Mahoni conceived the son the Lord instruction to Mahoni and uh, her husband was that this boy will serve me until death this boy will not put a razor on his head this boy will not um, eat any grape this boy will not drink any wine this boy will not have nothing ferment including vinegar he will not have it because he's going to do my work but sometimes disobedient can cause your death sometimes disobedient can cause your, your pitfall because when your flesh is trying to overrule what the lord is saying to you it will cost you it will cost you and it will cost you great pain it will cost you great sorrow it will cost you 
So when the Spirit of the Lord is upon you and give you divine instruction to do stuff, you need to listen to what does say the Lord. And you need to do as unto the Lord. Because if you don't do as unto the Lord, it can even cost you your life. Don't care what men yeah, or women might say. Don't care what anybody might say. You know you are hearing the voice of God. You know that God gives you a divine instruction that you to follow you to obey but yet you want your flesh to over overrule you your flesh is going to dominate you because you're going to say God will forgive me wish he will because he forgive me for a whole lot when I walk out of his will he forgive me he forgive me even when I make the dreadful mistake that will would cost me my life he still saved me he put me through the fire but he still saved me so i'm here today to tell you that when you see people walking in the or anointing the organic anointing of god when you see people going through their things you don't know what they're going through you don't know what god have said to them you don't know what covenant they have made with god because children of god a lot of us do not want to make a covenant with God to ded 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 dedicate ourselves to God but we want to make a covenant with the devil and the devil always wants something don't think the devil is going to give you all this and he's not going to want something back from you know that only thing that God requires of you he wants eternal life he wants you to have eternal life he wants you to do his will he wants you to walk in his precept he wants you to walk in his law. I am not going to sit here like I'm holier than thou. I'm not going to sit here like I don't make pitfall. I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I'm something that I'm not. I am here to keep it real. And I thank God that I have the platform that I can talk and keep it real. So I'm going to read about Samson marriage and then I'm going to talk to you about that. So, Psalms, um, Judges chapter 14, Judges chapter 14, I read, Samson went down to Tamar and saw there a young Philistine woman. When he returned, he said to his father and mother, I have seen a Philistine woman in Tamar, now get her for me as my wife. His father, his father and mother replied, Isn't there an acceptable woman among your relatives? I'm not telling you now to marry your, your relative because we pass from the Old Testament and we are in the New Testament. But God is taking me back to the Old Testament because I have to share my testimony with somebody that is watching me today. Hallelujah. So do not marry your relative off. Don't marry your relative. Do not marry your relative. So the mother replied, isn't it there acceptable woman among your relative? are among all our people must you go to the uncircumcised philistine to get a wife but samson said to his father get her to me she is the right one for me his parents did not know know this was from the lord who was seeking an occasion to confront the philistine for what for what that time they were ruling over israel you see, um, God will even send, God will even send the devil as what he did in Job. God will send the devil to tempt you. God will put the devil in front of your face to see if you're going to bow to the devil or you're going to trust him to rise you up. Are you going to trust him to uphold you in his right hand? He will even send you the devil to test you. And as I, and as I read... And as I read, as they approached the vineyard of Tamar, suddenly a young lion came roaring towards him. That is Samson. The spirit of the Lord came upon him in power so, th so that he tore the lion apart with his bare hands as he might have torn a young goat. But he told neither his father nor his mother what he had done then he went down and talked with the woman 
and he liked her. He liked her. Sometime later, when he went back to marry her, he turned aside to look at the lion carcass. It was it was it was a swarm of bees and, and some honey, which he scooped out of, with his hand and he ate the honey. He went along when he joined his parents, he gave them some of the honey. And they too ate it, but he did not tell them that he take the honey from the lion carcass. He didn't still not did not tell the parents because he know listen to your parents when your parents talk. Because Samson knew that Hekatolobo Shai Mandrobo Satakatule by Rabaku Robo Sandai Rebakotorobo Shandrobo Sata Rebakindrobo Sai. Le baku robo sandarabai, raba sete robo shandai, mand robo kuto robo shai, makati obosa le mand robo sandai. Hey, this this Samson is talking about me, or I don't know about you, but it's talking about me. It is talking about me, and let me go on to read. Then I give you a, a, a prelude of the testimony. Now his father went down to see the woman, and Samson made a feast. There was customary for a bridegroom when he appeared, he was to give 30 companions. He was given 30 companions. Let me tell you a riddle. Samson said to them, This is in the Bible. Samson said to them, if you if you can give if you can give me the answer within seven days of the feast i will give you 30 linen garment and 30 sets of clothes if you can tell me the answer you must give me 30 linen garment and 30 set of clothes tell us your riddle they said let's hear it he replied out of the heater something to eat out of the strong something sweet for three days they could not give the answer on the fourth day they said to samson wife coax your husband into explaining the riddle for us or we will burn you and your father household to death i will burn you and your father household to death did you invite us here to, to rob us? She asked. Then Samson's wife threw herself on him, crying, You hate me. You hate me. This is Delilah. You don't love me. You have given my people a riddle, but you have not told me the answer. I have even explained to my father, to my father or my mother he haven't tell his father he haven't tell his mother or father nothing about the lion he haven't tell his father nothing about this woman because he insists that this is what he want he want this woman so he haven't explained nothing he haven't tell them nothing i have even explained i have i've not even explained it to my father neither nor my mother he replied so why should I explain it to you? That's his wife. She cried. She cried for whole seven days of the feast. So on the, on, on, so on the seventh day, he finally told her. Because she continued to press him, she, she in turn explained the riddle to her people. Before sunset of the seventh day, the men of the town said to him, What is sweeter than honey? What is stronger than a lion? Samson said to him, to Sam, Samson said to them, If you had not plowed my heifer, you would, you would not have solved my riddle. If you have not plowed into his wife, you would not have solved my riddle. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him in power. He went down to Ashkelon, struck down 30 of their men, 
strip them of their belonging and give their clothes to those who had explained the riddle. Burning with anger, he went up to his father's house and Samson's wife was given to the friend who had attended him at his wedding. Samson's wife, who attending at the wedding, was given to his friend. So this is what happened. Samson went and married, did not tell his mother, did not tell his father who is he's going to marry. He went, he did not he did not talk it over with them. Even though they want someone, say they want someone in Jamaica or South Africa or wherever or in America. But you want this person because this person pretend to be so sweet to you that they will do anything but they are planning for your demise and they are st strategically planning your downfall but you don't know that they are planning for your downfall so now let me go now down to um, Samson vengeance I'm going to skip 15 I am going to skip 15 you read 15 at your quiet time because Samson take vengeance on the Philistine. You read that at your quiet time. So I'm just going to drop down. I'm just going to drop down now. I think I'm going to read Samson. I think I'm going to read Judges 15. If you want to hear our forebear. Later at that time of the wheat harvest, Samson took a young goat and went to visit his wife. He said, I am going to my wife's room, but her father would not let me go in. I was so sure you truly ate her. He said, that I gave her to your friend. Isn't her younger sister more attractive? Take her instead. Uh, take her instead. Samson said to him, this time I've, I have a right to get even with the Philistine because I will really harm them. So he went out and caught 300 foxes and tied them, them tail to tail in pairs. He tied them tail to tail in pairs. He then fastened a torch to every pair of tail, lit the torches and lit the foxes loose the standing, the standing grain of the Philistine, he burned up the shock and shed, shedding standing in the grain together in the vineyard into an olive grove. When the Philistine asked, who did this? They were told, Samson, the Timite son-in-law, because his wife was given to his friend. So the Philistine went up and burned her and her father to death. My father did not get burned, hallelujah. So he said to them, since you have had like this, I won't stop until I get my revenge on you. He attacked them viciously and slaughtered many of them. Then he went down and stayed in a cave in the rock of Etam. The Philistine went up and camped in Judea spreading out near Leah. The men of Judea asked, why have you come to fight us? They know why, why Samson came to fight them, but they are pretending like they don't know. You see, some of us live a life of pretend. Some of us is a sore shame of our past. Some of us is a so a shame that we suppress that thing and we are afraid to talk that thing because we feel like somebody's somebody's going to get you either way. So you get them before they get you. So whatever is inside your past and you are among people that you think going to use it against you, you make sure you first talk that they don't have nothing on you because you going to talk and say what? Thus says the Lord, and what is in your mind, what you have been through, and people know, you better talk before they tell. Because when you tell your story, they will not be able to share your glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So this is what happened as I read verse 9. 
As I read verse 9, the, Philist the Philistine went up into an camp in Judea, spreading out, out near Leah. The men of Judea asked, Why have you come to fight us? We have come to take Samson prisoner. They answered, they answered to do to him as he did to us. They want revenge. Th then 3,000 men from Judea went down to the cave in the rock of Etam and said to Tom Samson, Don't you realize that the Philistine, the Philistine are the ru our ruler over us? What have you done to us? He answered, I merely did to them what they did to me because they slept with his um give his wife to his friend so he's taking revenge so he said i merely did to them what they have did to me they said to him we have come to tie you up and hand you over to the philistine samson said swear to me that you won't kill me yourself they said agree they answer we will only tie you up and hand you over to them. We will not kill you. So they bound him with two ropes and led him up from the rock. He, as he approached Lee, the Philistine came toward him, shouting, the spirit, the shouting, shouting, shouting. The spirit of the Lord came upon him in power. Then the rope of his arm became like charred flax. He broke the rope, and the, and and the binding dropped from his hand. Finding a fresh jawbone of a donkey, he grabbed it and stuck it down a thousand men. Then Samson said, with, with donkey's jawbone, I have made donkey out of them. What a donkey jawbone. I have killed a thousand men. When he finished speaking, he drew away the jawbone, and the place was called Ramat Leah. Because he was very thirsty, he cried out to the Lord, you have given your servant the great victory. Must I now die of thirst and fall into the hands of the uncircumcised? Then God opened up the hollow place in Lee, and water came out of it. When Samson drank, drank his strength returned, and he revived. So the spring was called E. Akori. E. Akori. And it's still there in Lehi. Samson led Israel for 20 years in the day of the Philistine. You see, Samson was still doing good. But because, of, because the father gave the wife to the younger woman, because they slept with his, um, I think it's his first wife, he's, they, he slept, they slept with, he decided to revenge them. Not knowing he's, he's digging his own grave. He did not know that. Because he still did not do and following the precept of the Lord. But the gift is without repentance. So don't let anyone tell you that God is not with you. Because God is still with you. God might not activate in the gift in your life. Because of the things that you might have done. But the gift is without repentance. God is not a take back person. He don't take back stuff that he give unto you. And he don't give sickness or disease. He is not a God that he should lie. And a son of man that he should be repented. So he's not taking back the gift from you. But we go on to um, chapter 16 with Samson and Delilah. One day Samson went to Gezi, and then I will give you my story. One day Samson went to Gezi, where he saw a prostitute. He went in to spend the night with her. Then, then the people of Gezi were told, Samson is here. So they surround the place and lay in wait for him all night at the city gate. They made, they made no move during the night, saying, At dawn, we will kill him. 
But Samson lay there only until the middle of the night. Samson was very kind of strategic. Then he got up and took all of the door of the city gate together with the two poles and he tore them loose. Bar and all, he lifted them, lift them to his shoulder and carried them to the top of the hill that faced Hebron. Sometime later, he fell in love with a, hum, with a woman in the valley of Sorke, whose name was Delilah. The ruler of the Philistine went to her and said, See if you can lure him into showing you the secret of his great strength and how we can overpower him so we may tie him up, subdue him, each of us will give him give, each of us will give you 1100 shekel of silver people will sell you for anything people will sell you for anything leaders non leaders will sell you for anything when they see the glory of god and they cannot understand how you survive they cannot understand how you how you fight that warfare. They cannot understand how you how you fight through that battle. They cannot understand how you he or she is still standing. They cannot understand what dimension is he or her walking in because they cannot understand. Because if you don't know the battle. If you, you don't know a person battle, you don't know what they have gone through, you're not going to sit through their battle. You will not stand and fight. You will not go through the battle that they have gone through. So you see me as a bruised soldier, you don't know what I've been through unless you know me. If you don't know me and you just know me on social media, you just know me on social media, you don't know the battle I fight, you don't know what I face daily, you don't know where I walk, you don't know the place that I have gone, so what is on me? is of God. What is on me is organic. This is not no babalayo. This is not no juju. This is not no witchcraft. No. God is with me. God is sitting up high and he looking down on me. He said, daughter, I will not leave you, nor will I forsake you. Even when the enemy come in like a flood, even when the enemy try to take me out, just because of the anointing, the anointing anointing that break the yoke, the anointing that destroys sickness, the anointing that destroy disease, the anointing that break the yoke. When they try to, to decapitate me, when they try to put me into a box, when they try all they can but God, but, but Yeshua I'm a sure. He sit up high and he's looking down on me in the mighty name of Jesus. He sit up high and he's looking down on me in the mighty name of Jesus. So you don't know where I've been. You don't know what I've gone through. You don't know. So you cannot share my glory because you don't know my story. So I continue with Delilah. No, not one. I continue with Delilah. So, Del so Delilah said to Samson, tell me the secret of your great strength and how can I, how can be, how, how you can be tied up and subdued, and subdued, and uh, subdued. Samson answered her, if anyone tie me with seven fresh, fresh thumb that I have not been, that have not been dried, I will become a weak as any other man. You see, Samson, what Samson was doing, Samson was testing Delilah. Even though Samson loved Delilah, I'm sorry for the airplane, I'm near the airport. Even though Samson loved Delilah, Delilah did not love Samson. Delilah was from the pit of hell, and a man can be a Delilah. It doesn't have to be a woman, a Jezebel. It doesn't have to be a woman, a, 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 a Delilah. A man can be a Jezebel. A man can be a Delilah. 
a man can set you up just as Delilah did just as the men of all when they try to set just like with David think about all the men of, men of all that God hold that God show mercy that God let them fight the battle and God let them win so a woman is not always that that a Delilah or a Sam or a, or a Jezebel a man can be in that category and I'm going to read this and then I'm going to tell you my story hallelujah so he want to know Delilah want to know what is Samson's strength so Samson is telling him telling her how she he can tied up and be subdued Samson answer her if anyone tied me with seven fresh thongs that have not been dried, I will become as weak as any other man. Samson lied. Then the ruler of the Philistine brought her seven fresh thongs that had not been dried, and she tied him, she tied him with them. When with the men hidden in the room, she called to him, Samson, Samson, the Philistine, the Philistine are up on you. The Philistine are up on you. That's what she said. The Philistine are up on you. She's telling, she called him in. But yet she's telling them, the Philistine are up on you. But he snapped the tongue easily. As a piece of string snap when it come close to a flame so the secret of his strength was not discovered then Delilah said to Samson you have made me a fool you lied to me come now tell me how you can be tied he said if anyone tie me securely with new rope it that have been never used I will become weak as any other man so Delilah took new rope and tied him with them then with men hidden in the room she called to him she called to him Samson Samson the Philistine is up on you but this but the but he snapped the rope of his arm and they were like tread. The rope became like tread. The rope became like tread. Then Delilah, uh, uh, when somebody want to get you, they will not stop until they get you. But in the name of Jesus, whoever is your Samson, whoever is your Delilah, whoever is your, is your Jezebel, in the name of Jesus, they shall be destroyed. In the name of Jesus, they shall be destroyed. In the name of Jesus, your Jezebel and Delilah shall be destroyed. In the name of Jesus, by fire, by force, they shall be destroyed. By fire, by force, they shall be destroyed. In the mighty name of Jesus. Halabakorobo. Lebakurobo shatai. Leba kurobo sandro robosha. Leba korobosai. Then Samson said, then Samson, then Delilah said to Samson, Until now you have been making a fool of me and lying to me. Tell me how you can be tied. He replied, If you weave seven braid of my head into the fa fabric, on the loom and tighten it with the pin i will come as weak as any other man so while he was sleeping delilah took seven braid off his head wove it, wove them into the fabric and tighten it with the pin again he called to him and said samson the philistine are upon you he woke up from his sleep and pulled the pin the loom with the fabric then he said then she said to him 
How can you say I love you when you won't <laughs> or when you won't confide in me? I'm going to pause here before I land. I'm going to pause here before I land. And if you're not here or here, you can watch the replay. Because there is no shame with God. When somebody wants your demise, whether they're going to chase you one year, whether they're going to chase you two year, whether they are going to chase you ten year, no matter how long, if they see something on you that they want, they're not going to try, stop until they try to build, bring you down. But if you live a holy, consecrated life unto God, God will reveal to you. Even the closest enemy, even the closest friend, even the closest priest, apostle, bishop, pastor, evangelist, deacon, teacher, preacher, he will reveal to you what you need to do he will reveal to you and let you know he will reveal it to you you just have to trust god live a holy life because holiness is still real and i read this is the third time you have made a fool of me you and you made a fool of me to, and told me the secret of your great strength with such nagging, she prodded him day after day, and he was, he was tired to death. He was tired to death. So he told her everything. He said, no razor have ever been used on my head. He said, because I have been a Nazarite, set apart to God since birth. If my head were shaved, my strength would leave me. And if I would become as weak as any other man. When Delilah saw that he had told her everything, she sent word to the ruler of the Philistine to come back once more. He, he told me everything. So the ruler of the Philistine returned with, sil with silver in their hand, having put him to sleep on her lap. She called a man to shave off the seven braids of his ear. And so begin to subdue him, subdued him and his strength left him. Then she called Samson, the Philistine are upon you. He awoke from his sleep and thought he will go out as before shake shake him, himself free he will shake himself free but he did not know that the lord had left him saints of god i am here to tell you when you get a divine instruction from god when you make a covenant with god when you are walking with god and you know that you know that god is with you god will keep you don't be fooled because the very elect of god can be fooled i was fooled and i'm about to land then the philistine sees him gorge his eyes and took him down to gaza bind him with brass shekel they set on him grinding in prison but the hair on his head began to grow after he has shaved. The hair on his head began to grow after Samson had shaved. Delilah never stopped. Delilah never stopped until Samson shared his secret. I am here to tell you today. I am here to tell you today that if you live a holy life if you live a consecrated life unto God don't care how the enemy try to get you they will not succeed 
I have been full. Thought it was the best thing still since sliced bread. And want to know. For 10, 11 years, I took a vow unto the Lord. For 10 years, I make a covenant unto the Lord. As a Nazarite. Unto God. And I went into the trap of the enemy about five or six months ago. And I married a Delilah that wanted us to shave my head. That wanted us to shave my head. Think about somebody chasing you for over 12 years because they see the glory of God on you. And you went and almost go into covenant with that person. That person do not want to, they don't want to have sex with you because they want to marry you. They want to be a distinguished gentleman because they want to marry you. I take authority over this environment right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I use the airborne force of God and the anointing that break and destroy yoke. And I destroy every Delilah. I destroy every, every, every Jezebel that is watching me. I destroy you and I set you ablaze in the mighty name of Jesus. I set your coven ablaze in the mighty name of Jesus. I set you ablaze in the mighty name of Jesus. I use the undiluted blood of God to use against you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Shabaya God. Shabakodoroboshai. Lebandrobo Satamashai. Libaku Robosa. Leba Senderobo Satea. Mandrobo Saturobo Shatai. Leba Senderobo Satai. Labaku Robo Satata. Le bakondrobosha, le kurabase, le bakondrobosha. In the name of Jesus, destroy your Delilah, destroy your Jezebel. Don't lay your head in the lap of Delilah. Do not put your head in the lap of Delilah. Because what Delilah want, Delilah do not want you. It, it want what you carry. Delilah does not want you. He want what you carry. Now I'm speaking about a man and I'm speaking about a woman. Because a man can be a Jezebel under Delilah. Delilah want what you have. So Delilah now form life with me. Want to make covenant with me. Want to marry me, but want to shave my head. Want to shave my head. You've been dating me for 12 years. A man been dating you, or, or, or you been dating a woman for 12 years, 8 years, 5 years, a month, 2 weeks, 3 weeks. They see you. They want to be with you. They're supposed to take every package that you come with. They're supposed to take the good, the bad, and the ugly. Because that's how they meet you. I'm not telling you not to sub subject yourself to your husband. Not to, not to under your husband covering. Not to under um, uh, your husband. I'm not telling you that. Don't say, I am telling you that. Let me put that disclaimer out. But as for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, you shall not shave my head. As for me and my house, you will not give me a spirit of manipulation. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I was so manipulated. I was so distracted. I was so hypnotized in a foreign land. 
that one of my locks was taken. But to God be the glory that I'm a praying machine and I know how to tap in the heavenly because what the Lord said, I will help you even when you make your mistake. I will help you. Even when you did not listen to me, I'm going to help you. But you have to cooperate with the enemy. Sometimes you have to cooperate with the enemy to get what you want. Sometimes you have to cooperate with the enemy. Let the enemy think you are a friend, but you are play, praying even the fire. You are bringing heaven down and hurt because God already speak his love's word in your ears. So you might be into a position where the enemy is talking to you about whether they don't want you to wear makeup, whether they don't want you to wear this, whether they don't want you to wear that. And you, man, or you, woman, you keep shaving your, your wife's head because you know that her, he, her he, uh, strength is in her here. The devil is a liar from the pit of hell. Man or woman, if you don't feel to go to the barber or the hair stylist, do not do it in the mighty name of Jesus. I am here, out here today, in the element to tell you that I almost cut my hair. My hair is so long. That when they wanted us to cut my hair, I said, I said, I agree because I don't wear attachment on my hair. I am, I don't have anything against attachment, but I do not wear it. I don't wear attachment. I am a Nazarite. I am a Nazarite, a converted Nazarite. So when they come with the barber, when they come with the hair stylist to shave your head, to do what they need to do, you need to pray and ask the Lord. I was so brainwashed. I am here to tell you that I was so brainwashed. I was so close to shave my head. I was so close to shave my head. I was so close to lay in the lap of Delilah as a man to shave my head. And I'm here to tell you today that you need to listen to God. You need to listen to God. My birth was unusual. Samson's birth was unusual. Your birth might be unusual. I don't know you, but my birth was unusual because I know what happened when my mother conceived me. The story began the longest opposition that is that Israel faced was 40 years under the Philistine. He faced 40 years. Israel faced 40 years under the Philistine. And you have to know that you have a mission in life. You need to know that you have a mission in life. You need to know that God called you. You need to know that when you walk into the holies of holy, when you are walking into a dimension of grace, when you are walking into a dimension of power, you have no power of your own. And if God did not give you that power, you get it from the evil altar. Samson birth was unusual. Samson birth was unusual. Remember Samson's mother could not have children. The father could not have children. And the angel of the Lord come and tell them because they God have an assignment for you. I am telling you as a Samson. I am telling you as a child of God. When God have divine destiny for your life. Do not listen to a man. Do not listen to a woman to tell you what to do. Because I, had a, I have a pitfall. I had a pitfall. And it's by the grace of God I am talking to you. Because the devil will not take me out in the mighty name of Jesus. Because Samson's birth was his unusual. He given birth, the mother giving birth to Samson was announced by the angel of God, by the angel of Yahweh, his birth was announced, my birth was announced, his birth was announced. God has called me before I was even conceiving my mother's womb. But because of disobedience, of running here and there, 
I did not want the calling of God, but I know that I have to embrace the calling of God because guess what? My birth, my mother told me, my grandmother told me, my birth was announced before I was born. Samson's birth was announced and revealed to Isaac and revealed to John the Baptist. Maybe you don't know what you're going through today. Maybe you don't know what you're called to do. But let nothing divert you or distract you from what God has told you. People might call you crazy. People might call you weird. People might have argument to say to you. They want to tell you what they say. How they feel. But at your quiet time. Meditate on the word of the Lord. Meditate on God. See your call. See your walk with God. And don't let the, the devil distract you. Because he come to kill and destroy. And no one cannot know that we all walk in a different anointing. We all carry a different oil. In the name of Jesus. You don't know what your calling is. You don't know what you're called to be. I, my, my twins were less than 15 ounces. My twins were less than 15 ounces. At birth, at five months, they were less than 15 ounces at birth. And anyone that know my children, they cannot look at them and say they were premature. Because guess what? God have a call on their life. God has predestined and ordained them from the womb. So no devil in hell could not snatch them away from me. Even that dangerous accident, the devil could not move my pregnancy. So I'm here to tell somebody, do not put your head in the lap of Delilah. Because Delilah just want to know your strength. My strength is not in my hair. My strength is not in my hair. But is who I am in God. My strength is not in my hair. But is who I am in God. And to see the manifestation of God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Because a Nazarite, if you look in number 612, a Nazarite, it can be for a period of time. It can be a period of time where, you know, you cannot eat this, you cannot do that. You cannot go around dead people. I don't go around dead people. Even if it's my family, I don't do it because I'm not ready to cut my hair. And I'm not ready. So I don't dedicate myself to the Lord. So I am telling you. That you need to know the call of God on your life. You need to, when a man or a woman come to you and want your hand in marriage, you need to stand fasting. You need to pray. You need to hear the voice of God, whether it's God or the devil. Because the devil will send you a woman. The devil will send you a man. And you think that man is your husband. And he's not your husband. Even sent from the pit of hell to destroy your anointing. You might be sent a wife and you think that is your wife. They might not be your wife. They might be set up from the pit of hell to annihilate you, to take you out. They might be set from the pit of hell to take you out because they see your glory. They see your anointing. They see what you carry. They don't understand what you carry. So they want that anointing. They will even plan to marry you. Several times I've been church in my whole church and people come or the pastor come and I was, I'm dating somebody. And they know I'm dating this person. And I have a, a house. I don't, you don't have to sleep with a man. You don't have to sleep with a man. If you are dating a man. And they're telling you they want to test drive you. Or you're dating a woman. And the woman want to test drive you. You need to run. That's a spirit of Delilah. 
and the spirit of Jezebel. Put your flesh under subjection and wait on the Lord. I was in the church. I was in a church. I was in a church going to this church saints for 11 years as a member in the church for seven years and the wife was not was not comfortable with me so she want me to marry somebody that i don't love that person was only supposed to bring me a deposit of my children that was not somebody that i was supposed to marry and the woman of god said to me you i said the lord did not reveal that this man is my husband the lord did not reveal to me that this man is my husband the woman of god that i'm looking at to to guide me to navigate me they told me um god is not going to show you everything until you marry him then you can love him after you marry him the devil is a liar from the pit of hell the devil is a liar from the pit of hell any church that you are in any church that you are in any 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 leaders that you are under and they are going to tell you when you marry the person you will see the glory of god they see what you carry and they want to they want to take you to do your demise so if you have a flesh problem that will happen to you if you have a flesh problem i don't have a flesh problem the problem that i have is my kindness towards people that's my kindness towards people i don't have a flesh problem so i'm here to tell you today that if you have a flesh problem if you if you with somebody and the lord did not tell you to marry that person and you to, you cannot come together and have the same agreement and you feel the indwelling of the holy spirit right there you need to pack your bag and go you need to pack your bag and go you need to pack your bag and go because samson moral samson moral was to serve god Samson have a mighty call on his life. Samson have a mighty call on his life. But what makes Samson's story so compelling? What makes Samson's story so compelling and interesting is all of the mighty deeds that he does. What make, my, my, what make me giving you a preview of my story because of the road that I trod, because of the place I go samson killed a lion with his baron i did not kill any lion with my baron samson killed this philistine i did not kill any philistine i have no i have, don't know if i have killed anyone but god moved people out of my way he moved people out of my way in the name of jesus so i'm here to tell you i'm here to tell you today that whether it might be three thousand Maybe it might be 1,000. Just be careful of your surrounding. Be careful of the Delilahs. Be careful of the Jezebel. I'm going to stand the Delilahs today. And a man can be a Delilah. A man can be a Delilah. So whatever covenant you make with God to serve the Lord as Jesus Christ of Nazareth, your Savior, your calling your gifting stay in that court with god stay in that court with god don't violate any vow that you have made to the lord do not violate any vow that you have made to the lord do not violate any vow that you have made to god keep your vow as unto the lord the lord will talk to you the lord will direct you the lord will guide you the lord will send people because even even when i came back from that foreign land and i spoke to my friend and i called him the the stylist and i said i'm going to cut my hair she said i will not cut your hair then my niece said to me that is very demonic yes it was because the lord did not tell me to do that 
So it was. It was demonic. If you read chapter 14, verse 1 and 9, in Judges, you will see how demonic that is. So I'm here to tell you today, cover yourself with the blood. Continue to cover yourself with the blood of Jesus. Continue to cover yourself. Don't be like Samson. Don't marry a Delilah. And a man can be a Delilah. A man can be a Delilah. Not just a woman. A man can be a Delilah. A man can be a Delilah. So don't let a man fool you, nor a woman. Because they come in wolf in sheep clothing. And they come to kill you. They come to destroy you. They come to tell you, you have to keep your mouth shut. You have to lay prostrate while I preach. While I do this. They don't want you in the church. So I'm talking to Christian women and Christian men. That is on social media. In boxing. Doing online dating. Doing online have your marriage already and you want online when you are online and if you are not so into the body of christ if you're not so into an authentic man or a woman of god and you start to get inbox messages for money inbox messages that their mother is sick inbox messages that they they the pity the the the, the cesspool is overflow inbox messages that they, they cannot pay the light inbox messages that the 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 um the water is not on inbox messages and every conversation is money you need to run you're dealing with a delilah you're dealing with a Delilah and you're dealing with a Jezebel and the Delilah want to shave your head. The Delilah want to know your strength and the Delilah can be a man. So I'm here to tell you today that you must watch and pray. Watch and pray. Don't care how they, these people come like wolf in sheep clothing. You need to watch and pray. You need to stay on your face. God is talking. God don't stop talk. God has not taken a, a gift from you. But he have you dormant because of your wicked deed. He have you dormant because of your wicked act. Learn something and know something. There is certain atmosphere you might go. There is certain atmosphere you might walk in. And the, 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 the preacher or the, was the, the instructor, the motivational speaker, they cannot talk until you walk in. Because you are carrying something that they are piggyback on. You are carrying something that they are piggyback on. You are carrying something. And I'm here to tell you, saints, try the spirit. Try the spirit. Test the spirit. And try the spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, don't let your head down into Delilah's lap because you might make a fatal mistake. But you might not be able to get out of it. To God be the glory, I was able to strategically get out of it. You might not be, the grace might not be on you to get out of it. But if you know that you have a call and you dedicate yourself as unto the Lord to do his will, to walk in his precept, walk in it. Don't let the devil come and fool you. Don't let the devil come and fool you. Don't let him come to take you out. Because what he's doing is taking out the children of God. What he's doing is taking out the remnant of people that leave that the Lord is speaking to. That undiluted word of God. Where the Lord is organically growing a remnant of people. The, the Lord is growing organically a remnant of people. I am not a near not to tell you not to sow money. Because I need money. I need somebody to sow in my life. I need money. I need to go to Austria. I need to go to Germany. I need to go. So I need money. So I am not here, but I will not sell the gospel. 
I will not sell the gospel. I will not do it. I am here to talk, to tell you that you need to wake up. I am here to tell you that you need to watch. I get a lot of testimony. I get a lot of people talking about their experience going online with these pre um, some preachers. But I'm not here to throw any shade on anyone. But know that don't disobey God. Don't disobey God. Because you see where I read. Where the lion attacked Samson. But Samson was able to kill it with his bare hands. Because the spirit of the Lord was upon Samson. Your, your prayer. Your prayer. You live a holy life. A consecrated life as unto the Lord. Your prayer will subdue your enemy. Your prayer will take down your enemy. Your prayer will do it. One can put a thousand. Two can put ten thousand. Sometimes you, you even marry the wrong person. And you're trying to get out of it. And there is no way. But I thank God for his grace. And I thank God for his mercy. That there's a thing that called annulment. There's a thing that called fraud. There are, there's a thing that called annulment. And there's a thing that called fraud. And I just pray. That you get something. From what I am saying. And don't put your head. In the lap of the lilac. Do not put your head. In the lap of the lilac. Hallelujah. Do not put your head in the lap of the lila. Oh, shatara robo shandarai. Laba kurobo sandarabo sai. Leba katara robo sama kurobo shandrabai. Laba korobo sandarabo sandarai. Reba kotorobo sandrebo sai. Leba kuraba sandarabai. Leba kuraba sandarabo sai. La bakurodobo sandarai, le bakandorobo santeterebo, le bakurobo seterebo, la mandorobo. Let me tell you something, children of God. Sega, Samson Sega begin when he start displaying loss. His fatal weakness was loss. What is your weakness? Uh, my weakness is kindness. My weakness is kindness. My weakness is throwing in the men and woman of God life. What, what, whatever it might be. Whatever the Lord said to me. But uh, are there water in my garden? No, they're not. Because they don't think I have a need. And we all have a need. We all have a need. But try to take that lust from your high. Don't let that lust. Don't let that flesh. Don't let that flesh destroy you. Don't let your flesh destroy you. In the name of God. Don't let your flesh destroy you. <coughs> because many of you. Many of you. That is watching me. God empowered you to do great exploit. But your flesh is dominating you. Your flesh is dominating you. My flesh did not dominate me. Because my flesh could not catch me. But my flesh was caught by my weakness of kindness. My flesh was caused. By my weakness of kindness. So am I going to stop being kind? No. But I'm going to use wisdom. I am going to use wisdom. I'm going to use understanding. I'm asking God to give me more of you. And less of me. More of you. And less of me. In the mighty name of Jesus. So I'm here to tell you today. That. God don't give you a, a regular calling, calling. He give you an extraordinary calling. He give you a special calling. But look at the Lord in two factor. Look at him in two factor. You know, theologian might be on here. 
And I just want to lay person, theologian might be in here, and there are more factors to look in. But I'm just looking into two factor, two factor. It can be ordinary calling to live in a normal life, and it can be a special calling. And you can do both by living in prayer. You can do both by studying the word of God. You can do both by fasting. Learn how to fast. Learn how to pray. Learn to turn the plate down. Learn to turn the plate down. This is my 78 days of fasting. And I will stay fasting. I will stay fasting in the name of Jesus. So learn how to do it. And the vow that God has given you. Look at the angel and see a Nazarite vow. Or you have a, a, a holy calling vow to go, I am have a calling, I go out there and I help people. I go out there and I witness to people, and I go out there and I help people. I go and I witness, and I lead them to Christ. I go on the highway, I go on the byway. If I have to go, if I have to go to Australia for one soul, I will be there in Australia for one soul. Once the Lord give me that vision and dream, I will be there for the one soul. Come hell, I water, I will be there for the one soul. So learn your calling. Hallelujah. And here's a little thing about um, a Nazarite. Nazarite mean that you, you dedicate and you consecrate yourself. You make a vow, taking a voluntary for a period. I'm not Samson. Samson was dedicated a Nazarite at birth. I am doing my vow until the Lord say so. Until the Lord say so. So what I do, I have to abstain myself from certain things. Like I, I love a, a ice cream. I love a ice cream named Rum Raisin. I love a ice cream, Rum Raisin. And when I buy the ice cream, I'm eating the ice cream, but I have to spit out every single raisin, every raisin, every grape. I have to spit it out. I cannot swallow it because I made a vow unto God. What vow did you make to God? Are you keeping your vow that you made to God? Are you keeping your vow that you made to God? Keep your vow that you made to the Lord. That the Lord will sustain you. The Lord will keep you. The Lord will confirm what he said you had to do. The Lord will confirm what he said you had to do. The Lord will keep you line upon line, precept upon precept. Hear a little, dear a little. The Lord will keep you as the apple of his eyes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And when you are doing things, if you have your parents still alive, oh, shakurabai, lebaku. And once your father is not agree in the, in, in the man of your choice or the woman of your choice, you need to run. When your mother is not in agreement with the man of your choice or the woman of your choice, you need to run because they know best. You might think you know best. But they know best. The pastor and the preacher might know. But your parents, they know best. They know what is best for their children. Sometimes you, sometime you do have a mother. A point of a correction. Point of correction. You have parents that don't wish well for their, their, their children. You do have parents that don't wish well for their children. And you have parents that will lead the children them into a pitfall. So that's a point of correction. You have leaders that will look out for you as sons and daughter. But they're hardly to find. You only have a handful of them. You only have a few of them. So I am telling you that God will use you in the capacity that he called you to use. He will use you, but consult someone. Consult someone. You know, don't feel like they might be jealous or anything like that. I know people that I see that get married, and um, you know, I, I, the Lord said that's not the one for them. But you cannot tell people that. You have to let everybody go through their own get enemy. 
Because you're going to tell them that this is not the person. I am not feeling that this is the person. And they are going to say, no, this is the person. So there's, there's not. You have men and women of God that will tell you, this is not for you. This is not for you. This is not your standard. This is not for you. Sometimes you need not to intermarry. Sometimes you need not to intermarry it far and all. Sometimes you need not to do it. Hallelujah. That is another message. Sometimes you do not need to intertwine with a foreigner. I am a foreigner. You maybe you don't need to intertwine with me to marry me. I'm going to use me as an example. I am a Jamaican living in the United States for 40 years, but I still have my accent. Maybe you not need to intertwine. Don't ask me for marriage. Because maybe we don't intertwine. Because we have a culture clash. You never know. So this is what he is saying. According to God's standard. Israel was not to intermarry with foreigner. This was because God promote. You hear that? My God. I'm not going to read that part. I'm going to leave that part that I wrote. I'm not going to read it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not going to I'm not going to read that part. But you read meditate on, on Judges chapter today. Take that time out with God to read it, read Judges. Read it from Judges chapter 1. Hallelujah. Read it. Read it. And you will get something from it. It's because what? Samson wants what he wants. Don did not want what Don want. Don was forcefully take what Don did not want. Don was forcefully take what Don did not want. But God. But God. But God. But God. So I'm here to tell you today. I am here to tell you that you need to listen to the Lord. Listen to the mighty one. Listen to the mighty one of Israel. Listen to Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the son of the living God. Don't listen to other God. Listen to Jesus Christ of Nazareth in the mighty name of Jesus. Samson's life was cut short. And even though he takes so many people with him, his life was cut short because he was hiding who is marrying from his parents. He was hiding it. So I'm here to tell you, I'm not here to throw any shades. I'm not here to tell you don't listen to your husband or don't listen to your wife. But listen to the voice of God. Listen to the voice of God. Listen to the voice of the Lord. Listen to the voice of the Lord. Habakorabo Shandrabosa. Le bakura basete. Le bakura bandarabo shatai. Mandarabo sakurabai. You see what Samson did? Okay. Um, the wife committed um, sin, sexual sin. The wife committed sexual sin. And he did not. He could have forgiven her because we sin daily. You know, maybe the wife has a flesh problem. Just as Samson has a lust problem. You understand? So he could have forgiven. But yet he wants Delilah. Not knowing that Delilah was a setup. Delilah was a setup. Delilah was a setup to get him down. Yeah. The, the, he was a setup to get, get him down. So you have to be careful. You have to be careful. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I'm going to read. I'm going to read 16. 
I'm going to read uh, Judges chapter 16 again. The Lord want me to read it again. Judges chapter 16. He want me to notice something. Judges sub chapter 16 verse 1 to 4. One day Samson went to Gaza where he saw a prostitute. Is he went and spent the night with her. Delilah was a prostitute. She was a hooker. She was a prostitute. Secret prostitute. And that's who bring him to his downfall. Be careful what you entangle yourself with. Be careful who you share a secret with. Be careful where you heat. Be careful where you drink. Be careful. Because food was the one that killed our, our forefather. Be careful where you eat. Thank God he graced me with cooking. Be careful where you eat. Because there's the Lila is in the midst and the Lila can be a man. It don't have to be a woman. Delilah can be a man. My Delilah was a man, not a woman. I'm a straight woman that love man. A straight woman of God. Anointed woman of God that love men, but I'm not showing any shades. So you be careful. Be careful because here it go. With, with Samson misery and Samson demise and I, I thank the Lord that I did not get a demise I get some misery in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus you know, I'm not here to prophesy for now until the Lord says so. I am a prophetess. I am a seer. And I see and I prophesy. But right now the Lord wants to get something to his people. Hallelujah. The final chapter of Samson's life was his misery of his demise. With a, with a tragic ending of someone so promising as Samson. Are you prom a promising person of God and you are going into your demise because of your flesh or because of money? I don't know if it's your flesh or your money. The flesh is not my problem. The money is not a problem. My problem is my kindness. So I have to use discernment with my kindness. He was a promising man. A lot of us here are very promising people that God want to get the glory. God want to expand and enlarge your cause. But are we jumping ahead of God? Are we staying in God? Are we asking God before we make those tragic mistakes? Are we asking God? Are we going down to our downfall? Are we asking the Lord? Are we staying our phase? Or is our loss consuming us? Is the money consuming us? Is the loss consuming us? Because what what demise with Samson was Delilah? What almost demise with me was my Delilah, which was a man. That was the my Delilah, and I did not fornicate. Okay, so don't draw any conclusion right there. Hallelujah, glory to God. So once again, when they ask, tell me your secret. You don't let people know how you pray. You don't let people know how you pray. You don't let people know your strategic move. Move strategically. Move strategically. Synchronize and syncopate your word. Synchronize and syncopate your move. Move the move of God. Remember God move. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He moved like a thief in the night. And I just want to go over something with you. Once again, a woman get Samson to tell him a secret. A man almost get me to tell him a secret. But what I do, I was, I was praying in the spirit. 
I was keep praying in the spirit because once the Lord said to me, you have been hip, 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 hypnotized. You are under a very hypnotic spell. And what I did, I just mandara bakurobo shandai, le bakurobo sendrabo, matete da bakurobo sai, re bakandara rabo shai, mandara baseko dobo, rabakoro, until I heard, plead the blood of Zachariah. Oh, in the name of God, Zachariah did not die on the cross for me. I cannot plead the blood of Zachariah. I have to plead the blood of Jesus. That's the blood I know. The only blood. Not goat blood. Not chicken blood. Not cow blood. Not, not turtle blood. I know the blood of Jesus. Because the blood of Jesus never ever loses its power. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So... If you're not in that marriage for long, don't share your secret. If you're not in that marriage for long, don't change your secret. If you're not in that marriage for long, don't change your secret. And even sometime you're in it for long, there, there is something that you need to keep to yourself. There is something that you need to keep to yourself. I was married for um, 21 years. I married at the age of 19 years old. And there was some, something my ex-husband did not know. Because I, I, I have my secret account. There was something that he don't know. So I'm here to tell you guys to open up your eyes. Because this is end time. In the name of Jesus. This is end time. And what Samson did. He played a deadly game with Delilah. He played a deadly game with Delilah. And let Delilah bring him over to the Philistine. Let the Delilah bring him over. So I'm here to tell you, when you hear from God, when you hear from God, when you are hearing from God, be very careful who come in your pathway. Be get very careful who speak in your life. Be very careful who lay hands on your head. Be very careful whose hand you shake because spirit do transfer. If you are not walking, in the anointing of God. If you are not walking. You, you, you will get the rail. Don't be the rail. In the mighty name of Jesus. Samson was mortared. Samson's life, life was tragic. A promising man like Samson, his life was tragic. And many of us Christians, we're walking into a dead zone. We are walking into a dead zone. But in the name of Jesus, as I pray and as I clap my hand, that you will be delivered from your dead zone. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, don't let your promised life that not yet fulfill. Don't let it be your demise because of your flesh or money. Don't let it be your demise in the mighty name of Jesus. You have a promise that you have to fulfill. Make your promise to fulfill. Take covenant with God, not blood covenant with man. Take blood covenant with God, not blood covenant with God. And remember, when you marry, you marry very well. Because he said, who oh, I have joined together, let no man put asunder. But I pray that any demonic marriage that is on this platform, I pray that it will break by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that it may break from by fire. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lebanda Rabasai, Raba Kudorobo Sapai, Mandara Rabasata Rabosa, Leba Kurobo Shai. I pray that you learn from the life of Samson. I pray that you learn from the life of Samson. And remember that a man can be a Delilah. I am talking about a man who is a Delilah. I am not talking about a woman now. I am talking about a man who is a Delilah. And I pray that God will give you that 
that gift uh, to control you in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that the Spirit of God will empower you in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that God will empower you in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, when you see person gifted by God, yet controlled by what he wanted when you are gifted by god don't be controlled by what you wanted let god send what he want to give you to you let god package that gift and send it to you in the mighty name of jesus and i pray that you will receive the gift of god with that man or that woman that you want to marry i pray that you will receive the gift of god in the mighty name of jesus don't be controlled by by your flesh don't be controlled by money don't be back controlled by what you want but what god want what does god want for you labako robo shai laba senderabo sata labako robo sai what i have learned from samson today what i learned from samson today i see we are persons so gifted by god yet is controlled by their flesh i see person that is so gifted by god but yet was controlled by their flesh don't be controlled by your flesh don't be controlled by your flesh in the mighty name of jesus let the promise of god be fulfilled upon your life in the mighty name of jesus let the promise of god be fulfilled upon your life in the mighty name of jesus hakura basenderebo shandarabai raba kurobo sandrobosa leba kurobo sandarabai don't fail don't fall prey by Delilah. I know a woman. Almost like me. Or higher ranks than me. And she sold everything for someone she did not know. On social media. Four of them. On social media. Quit their job and everything because they promised marriage. And they never showed up. So this person now left in the wilderness without nothing because she, she has been the rail of everything. She has been the rail of everything. Don't let your life be like that. If you are a man, don't let your life be like that. If you are a woman, don't let your life be like that. In the mighty name of Jesus, I'm not going to tell you that you cannot find out your husband on social media. I'm not going to tell you that you cannot find your wife on social media. But have a discernment of spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. Have a discernment of spirit and don't fall by a prey in the mighty name of Jesus. Leba kuba shakurobo satai. Leba don't fall to the prey of temptation in the mighty name of Jesus. Leba kuroba satai. Leba sindorobo sai. Doraba seterebo. Temptation can prevent God people from, from fulfilling their potential. Te temptation can can have you be the real. Don't be tempted in the mighty name of Jesus. Laba kurobo shandarabo. Leba kuroba sandarai. Lepa kurobo sai. Laba keterabo. I want to look at something else before i close off from samson i want to look at something else before i close off from samson in the mighty name of jesus samson have a very deep relationship with god you can go and read the book of judges read the all entire book of judges don't take a verse samson have a perfect relationship with god samson knew that he was a nazarite and he knew that he need to follow certain set of rules i need to follow a certain set of rule and i am trying to follow my set of rule to the the, the very best of my ability i am trying to 
yeah, tell him to come. I am trying to follow a set of rules to the divine best of my ability. In the mighty name of Jesus, I have the electrician coming. La Bakurobo. I am trying to follow a set of rules by the divine revelation of God. I need you to follow your, the rule that God gives you. you. If you are saved and sanctified, you fill with the Holy Ghost, endowed with power. Don't let a man or a woman try to derail you with some sex. Don't let a man or a woman try to derail you with a, a ring. Don't let, because they might be the agent of Satan that come to kill you, come to destroy you, come to destroy your ministry, come to destroy you. So don't be derailed by people. Know them by the Spirit. Try the Spirit. First John 4 verse 1 tell you to try the Spirit. Test the Spirit because it's not every Spirit is of God. And the Spirit that is not of God, they preach better than me. They know the eloquence and the corrientation and the eloquence to preach. And they know the Bible. They know the Word of God. I am not saying all, but majority working in Lucifer's kingdom. Majority working in the kingdom of darkness. Majority see your glory and they want to destroy you. So I'm here today to tell you to look and watch. Watch and pray. Look and watch. Watch and pray. Because guess what? Samson was dedicated and he has to follow certain rule. The rule were found in the Torah in Numbers chapter 6. In Numbers chapter 6, it was also communicated to his mother. The angel came three times and tell the mother. The angel came and told the mother that he, she, he was going to, she was going to have a son. She was going to have a son. So follow the rule of the law. In the mighty name of Jesus. But a knowledge of rule is not enough. The Nazarite vow was just not something to follow. It's a list of don'ts in life. It's a list of don'ts in life. It's a list of don'ts in life. Hallelujah. God forbid I should be caught up in the rapture. God forbid anything. Um, and if you are a Nazarite and you don't. But I will not die. I shall live. To declare the works of God in the life of the living in the mighty name of Jesus no witch or warlock will ever shorten my life because who God of bless who God have anointed and appointed to live you cannot kill them you have to kill your own self and drink your own blood so anyone that was setting for my demise I send it back to sender in the mighty name of Jesus God I have a special dedication and a special relationship with Samson without understanding the larger purpose that the Nazarite vow was more than a list of don't and do. The Nazarite was to sustain him. Being a, oh, you're shocked at the Labor so to I realize. Oh, glory to God. This platform is very raw. I realize glory. Thank you, Jesus. I realize why I don't have the loss of the flesh. Because I'm a Nazarite. I am a Nazarite. I don't have the loss. God, God, take that away from me. And I give him glory. I give him honor. And I give him praise. The outward and the inward will show you who God is and who God called you to be. Don't just sit in there looking delicious and somebody is looking at you. Don't just sit in there looking delicious and know that someone is trying to, to finish your life. Someone is trying to finish your life. I want you to watch and pray and let the Lord have his way in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. So when the Samson was confronted by Delilah, with the loss of the Lila, his here was just his here. His vow was something more. His here was just his here. His here can grow back. Your strength can grow back. You can grow from glory to glory. But don't put your, your head in the lap of the Lila. 
because they have motive operandi. They have motive operandi to finish you, to wipe you out. So I pray that the Lord is will bless you today. I want to go more. I would love to go more because it's getting very deep right now. I'm going to go come back and go in more in depth. But I have to tend to my electrician. I think he's here. I will get, get, get in depth. I will get in depth and tell you more about Delilah, about Jezebel. I encountered Jezebel and I encountered Delilah. I encountered Jezebel. I encountered Delilah. I encountered Leviathan. I encountered a coiling serpent. I encountered them all. But God. But God. But God. So don't let loneliness lead you into the lap of Delilah. Don't let loneliness put you in the hands of Jezebel. Don't let loneliness put you in the hand of Delilah. I'm going to focus on Delilah today. Don't do it. Pray. 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 Watch. Pray. Fast. Pray. Because when you think they're just talking to you, they married six, seven women. They married six, seven men. When you think it's you are the only one, no, 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 you're not. No, you're not. You are not. You are not the only one. You are not the only one. Don't think you are the only one. That person has to really dedicate it to you. I'm not going to sit here and tell a long distance relationship doesn't work. It does. You have some that work. When they don't have ulterior motive. When they don't have a motive operandi. When they don't want to snatch your glory. It does work. But try the spirit. Try the spirit. Because it's more than a special relationship with you and your holy God who has saved me, who has saved you. When you are tempted, when I am tempted by the honey of this world, because honey is sweet and I don't like honey, but honey is sweet. I like love cane sugar and a guy for syrup, but honey is sweet. But I don't, I don't use honey. I don't like honey. Hallelujah. You use what you want to do. But don't be tempted because of the honey of this world. Because the world outside is lovely. The world outside is sweet. The world outside is nice. And many Christians today, we have a special relationship with God. Through Jesus Christ of Nazareth. But some, be, some time being a some, but some that being a Christian... Have a list of don't and do's that you need to follow. You need to make covenant with God. And you need to keep your covenant with God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Don't base your fact that you have a special relationship with God. And he save us. And we are holy because he is holy. To bring, to bring glory. Yeah, we are holy but we are not. We are not. We are not. Learn from Samson today. Learn from Samson today. Samson deity, that Samson deity and rule and long hair mark him out as having a special relationship with God. I mark him as having a special relationship with God. You know, I met somebody and I was talking to them, and um, while I was talking to them and getting to know them. They almost let me know that it's white garment people wear their hair like this. That's a lie from the pit of hell. It's a lie from the pit of hell. Bob Marley was a prophet. You all did not believe Bob Marley. You know, all did, nobody did not believe Bob Marley. Now you're using the ganja, the weed. You're using the weed right now for medicine. When he was smoking it, he was wrong. He's been a Nazarite was wrong. You stipulize Jamaican people as using the herb. 
and we use the herb of the land and now the herb is legalized as a medicine when 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 we get the wisdom and knowledge of god you want to twist it society want to twist it society want to twist you don't let society twist you by you loving delilah don't let society twist you by you loving and delilah don't let society twist you by you confiding in delilah keep some things to yourself keep some things to yourself keep something into yourself in the mighty name of jesus ya bakura bo shai la bakura bo sandra bo satai le bakura bo sandra bo sha la bakura bo sandra bo le bakurte basaya mighty jehovah we just bless your name mighty jehovah we just give you glory mighty jehovah we give you honor we give you praise because you are a good god all by yourself sit up high and looking down low in the mighty name of Jesus, we worship you, Abba Father. We worship you, Abba Father. And anyone that is out there, at the sound of my voice, that you have been deceived or you are in a deception, you need to open up your eyes in the mighty name of Jesus. If you have your husband home, be satisfied. If you have your wife home, be satisfied. Work on him. Work on her. Because the Bible says, who have God have joined together, let no man put asunder. So if God have joined it together, work on your life, work on your relationship, and stop looking on social media for a man or a woman. Stop doing that because you might be picking up a Delilah. You might be picking up yourself a Delilah. A male Delilah or a female Delilah. Everything that Samson want, everything that Samson did was because of himself. It was not because of God. It was because of himself. And even when his head was shaven and he went into the prison, God grew his hair back so he could be able to bring the temple down. He could be able to bring it down when all those people gather on the balcony and inside the hall and have him tied. He was able to bring the temple down. So I'm not going to look at him as dying as a martyr. He was able to bring the temple down because God was still with him. God is with you saint but live a holy life. Don't go through Samson life. Don't go through what Delilah did. Don't go through what Jezebel did. Everything Samson did was self. Everything that I did is self. You don't blame God. Everything that I did was self because I, I see the warning. And I have the warning sign. But self is telling me it's okay. No, you cannot change people. Don't try to change people. You can talk to people. And God will convert and convict. Convict and convert. God will do that. It's not your business to change anyone. That is not your business. So we try to live the same way, but we need to live according to God given mission. We supposed to live a life of purpose, not purposeless. We need to live a life of purpose, not purposeless. In the mighty name of Jesus, we don't do things because we want them, but, but because they are right in your eyes. No, live the law of God because God call us and uh, God call us. He have a mission. He save us. He give us a God given mission to bring Him the glory. In First Corinthians six twenty. 10 and 31 to live as holy people Ephesians 1 and 4 1 Peter 1 to 16 
to share his message of salvation which i'm doing right now matthew 28 verse 18 to 20 Paris Peter 2 9 to 12 we do not live the live live in this light we do not live in this light for special relationship we live in this light for the relationship with God for the relationship with God we want to have a relationship with God we want to have a relationship with God our special mission God given mission in life we are nothing more than Samson but to empower the spirit but to and dominate the flesh no don't but that's what Samson did and have a tragic a tragic death and that's what is in failure that's what a lot of Christian is failing is want to do what they want to do is want to do what they want to do but you go and share the gospel to people go and save people go and save people and don't don't you put your head in the lap of Delilah. Don't you put your head in the lap of Delilah. In the mighty name of Jesus. This is round one. This is round one. This is round one. So we just bless the name of the Lord. And we give God the glory. We give him the honor. And we give him the praise. Because he is God all by himself. He is God all by himself. Sit up high and look down low. He is God all by himself. So we give God all the glory today. We give God all the praise. And when he says so, I will be back. Because I want to go and dissect some some more. I want to go and see where I almost make the fatal mistake. I want to go and see where I almost, but almost, but God is able, God is able. And if you trust him and believe him and take him at his word and try not to dilute the word of God. You see how beautiful the cloud is and try not to dilute the word of God. Preach the word in season and out of season in the mighty name of Jesus. And don't dilute his word. Take him at his word. And I leave you with. Do not put your head in the lap of Delilah. Do not put your head in the lap of Delilah. And a man is a Delilah. So is a woman. So I leave you with peace. That's a pass at all understanding. And I will see you later. May God bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and give you the peace. That surpasses all human understanding. May God of divine favor. May God of divine wisdom. May the God of Elijah empower you. And what you need to cut and break. You need to cut away from, uh, from Delilah. Cut away from that man today. You need to cut away from that woman. Cut away from that woman today. Because they have a family. And they will try to fool you on social media. Cut away from them. In the mighty name of Jesus. They might just want the oil on your head. They will just want the oil on your head. They might see the glory of God on you. And they try to work that glory. They try to prostitute that glory. So be careful. In the name of Jesus. Be careful. Be watchful. Be watchful. Be prayful. And watchful. And do not put your head in the lap of Delilah. Do not. Put your head in the lap of Delilah. And I want you to know a man can be a Delilah. So may the God of peace bless you. That surpasses all understanding. May the God of peace continue to bless and keep you as an apple of his eye. In the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, I, I don't know my phone number. I'm very sorry. But I, I, like I tell you, I'm just keeping it real. I don't know my phone number or my blog. 
Okay, and my daughter is not here. Um, they are not here. So I'm trying to do this on my own because I don't like computer. I do not like computer. So I'm trying to do this on my own. And I pray that I will see you later. I pray that you will enjoy. I enjoy what I said. I pray that you share and don't be selfish. Share it. I'm, I'm always sharing. For nine years I've been sharing on my page. Now the hour has come. That I give you the undiluted word of God. The hour has come that I will give you the truth. The hour has come because John the Baptist is in this. I am John the Baptist, but you will not have my head. And I'm preparing the way of the Lord. You will not have my head by fire, by force. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will not astral project any sickness or disease upon my body in the mighty name of Jesus because anything you try to send my way I send it back like a bazooka a like a bazooka ATK 47 and a missile launcher right back to the sender I send it right back across the ocean in the mighty name of Jesus whether it be the Red Sea the Black Sea the Atlantic Ocean wherever it is I am here for war. I am not here for anyone to pry on me and step on my glory. So I pray right now that the that you will not lay your head in the lap of the lilac. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. You will not lay your head in the lap of the lilac. I pray your strength. I pray that you get something from this. And I pray that... You check your circle and check your conversation and check what was spoken to you and check what love coat was spoken to you. Check where have you been bamboozled. Check where you think you are being used and try to listen to that spirit. Listen to that small still voice because the lord showed up and he showed out and he tell us what to do and he give us divine instruction he give us divine direction but like me sometimes i don't take it i am i'm 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 not walking in the spirit of rebellion i am not doing that i am not doing that but i would be a lying preacher to come and tell you that i do everything perfect and i am holy I'm trying to be holy. I'm living in holiness and I'm trying to be holy. I am trying. It's a walk. It's a journey. It's an everyday walk that you have to walk. So may God richly bless you. May God keep you in the mighty name of Jesus. May God keep you. May God bless you. May the God of Elijah keep you in the mighty name of Jesus. Two people just asked me to tag them and I tag them and of course I don't know if they're going to accept you know because people don't want to hear the word like this but I have to give it to you straight from the throne room of grace because at this dispensation this is how he's doing it to me so if the Lord says so I will be back God bless you and have a wonderful and blessed afternoon.